Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. So where we started? So we started with traditional servers. So traditional servers is where you, where you have to buy everything, you have to own your data center, and then whether you use it or not, you have to pay for it. Okay. And obviously, you have to spend a lot of money in buying and maintaining those servers. Then you go to EC2 instances where it is better than your traditional servers. You don't have to buy the servers, but you have to provision them. Okay. The problem is that these servers come in a fixed number. It means if you go for T2 micro, you will have to go for 1 GB RAM. Okay, if you go for a bigger instance, you will have to like go for 4 GB RAM or 8 GB RAM. But there are chances that you don't use that much. Okay, to run a job, to, to run a work in your environment, in your cloud environment, you need only 300 MB of RAM. And uh, 80 or 800, uh, 800 MB of memory. But you are anyhow getting some 1 GB of storage and 1 GB of RAM or 8 GB of storage and 1 GB of RAM. So at the end of the day, if you see, there is a little bit, but yes, there is a wastage of a resource when you start using EC2. Hmm? Yes, definitely. It is better than our traditional data centers, but still there is a small wastage. Likewise, if I take T2 micro, it is 1 GB RAM one core CPU, but my work is not that big. I need only 300 MB. So other 700 MB is getting wasted. Scenario one. Scenario two is they gave me, let me say M4 large. M4 large is let me say 8 GB, but I don't need 8 GB. I need 6.3 GB. So another uh, 6.3, right? So another 1.7 GB is always getting wasted like that. So then comes serverless. So serverless or serverless, in serverless, we don't have to manage anything. Okay. Automatically, it will be managed by my AWS. Okay. And whatever you need, exact that thing you will get. If you need 1.6 GB of RAM, you get 1.6 GB of RAM. If you need 200 MB of storage, or 216 MB of storage, you exactly get 216 MB of storage. So when I say serverless, it is it doesn't mean that servers are not there. Servers are there, but those servers will be managed by AWS. So you don't have to provision anything well in advance. As per your work, Amazon will provision all the servers or the server capacity as per your work. So that saves a lot of cost. And that's why it becomes very, very popular for us to know what is Lambda and how it works. So what we will do is we'll start with Lambda. I will try to learn what Lambda is, how it works. So let me just log into my machine. Okay. So I am in my console. If I go to services and here, if I scroll a little bit down, I can see this Lambda. It says run code without thinking about servers. So you don't have to provision anything. You don't have to think about servers. It is a serverless component and you get started. So let's go. So here it says you can create a function and this is where you create the function. So as of now, if I go to my dashboard, So basically nothing is there. So no data is available. Okay. If I go to my applications, I don't have any applications right now. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll create a function here or I'll create a job here. Okay. Some function here. So let me go here and say, I want to create a function. Now to create a function, there are various options available like author from scratch means you start writing the code from the very beginning or use blueprint blueprint in a sense the basic infrastructure or basic template is already there you use it and you get your work done then there is something called container which i'll come later when i'm teaching you ecr 
So container image is available and then browse serverless app repository. So there is an app repository or there is a, again, like a template only, but um, it is owned by Amazon. So what I will do is if you say author from scratch, okay, we'll see what we have to do. So I'll say author from scratch. Now in the basic information, it says what will be the name of your function? So I can say my first function. something like this, I can see my first function. Now, the second thing is a little bit of coding will be required here. Now it will depend on you, which coding language are you going to choose? You can use .NET, Go, Java, Node.js, Python, Ruby, and then various versions of Python or Amazon Linux one or two. So based on your work, you will decide which coding language you will be choosing and whether uh, your coding language is supported or not, that also you need to check. So let me say, I will go with the latest version of Python, which is 3.9 and I'll go for 64 bit architecture. Then scroll down. There is a default execution rule and it says that if you want, you can change that default execution rule. So basically here, my Lambda will be talking to various components of AWS. So I will be creating a new role with basic Lambda permission. Okay. So there is a small code here, but there is a small execution role, which will be created here. So role creation may, might take some minutes, few minutes. Okay. Then in advanced setting, there is something called code signing. So code signing to ensure that the code is signed and approved by an approved source and not being altered since signing. So it is like protecting the code from people will not come and able, they will not be able to change it and enable network. So VPC and not. So I don't need all these things right now. I'll just go ahead and say, I want to create a function. So basically here I've done two things. One, I've created a role. Second, I have told that my coding language will be Python 3.9. And I just wrote a very simple function. So it says successfully created a function, my first function. You can now change its code and configuration and invoke your function with a test event. Okay. So first is it says you can change the code. Where can I change the code? So see here, this is the code which has been generated by default. Okay. And this is the message. Hello from Lambda. So if you are working with Lambda, this is the place where you will be changing the code and all. Okay. Then if you want to test the code, you have to create a test event here, configure test event. So I will test the code. So I want to configure test event, click on this. Here it says name a test event. So let me say, I will say test. Then come down and create a test event. And then if you come here, simply click on this test. Okay. Let me come here, test. Okay, so test event, test. Just come here and say, I want to test my code. So basically what is happening is that piece of code which you have written, okay, that got executed and these are the logs. So if you see here, the status code is 200 and it says, hello from Lambda. So this is the output you got. Now, what do you need to notice here? See here. the code ran for 1.17 milliseconds. So you were charged only for two milliseconds. Okay. And the resource which was utilized, so was only 36 MB. Okay. So you were charged only for 36 MB. So this is the beauty of Lambda. 